Please note that this video was pieced together in an attempt to capture the creative process of designing this device from prototype to finished product. I'm working on an automatic fish feeder and let me just show you what I came up with so far. This is just using scrap stuff that I had in the shop. So this is pretty obvious, is a old peanut butter jar. Inside here is a water bottle that just makes a funnel shape which is nice. And I just drill the hole in the bottom and then put the cap on and drill the hole in the cap and then of course this has a cover. So the food will go in there, the pellets, and that goes on there. So it's nice and um, protected from the rain. And then just using some plumbing parts, that fits right onto there. This is just an end cap, okay? I have a hole here for the food to come out of. And what I used was just a coil of 10 gauge wire, just coiled it around a, one, um, a half inch pipe. and. Um, it works great. <laughs> so the way I did this was just, um, that's just a one inch PVC pipe with a uh, uh, one inch coupling. I drilled a hole and put a, um, I believe that's a half inch uh, CPVC, but you could use whatever works for you. And I just taped it or I glued it in there, but it didn't glue real well because just a hole in the pipe. And then so I just taped it in real good with some electrical tape. So that's it. It's pretty easy. And there's my coil. Instead of using like an auger bit, which some people use, it's just a coil of wire. Nice and inexpensive. And this is a fitting. Um, it fits into the, uh, it's actually a, a reduction coupling that uh, reduces to, uh, from a one inch to a half inch PVC. And I just drilled it straight through so that it acts as a bearing. So instead of, the one inch pipe, you know, fitting tightly into this part and stopping right about here, which is what it normally does. I drilled through it uh, so that it, it, like I said, acts as a bearing. So it's a basically a PVC bearing, spins nice and freely. That just goes together like that and press fits in. And the end cap, I left this part sticking out a little bit and it acts a little bit like a spring. You can see that. And that just puts a little tension to hold it back. So there's a little bit of spring spring action. Not much, just a little bit. And it turns real easy. And it actually works really well. But I'm about ready to demo it. Get some food for the fish here. See if they got the timing correct. I guess they like that. All right, here it is from this side. What I did was I had some ABS plastic sheets, and so I mounted one to my lanai here from the back side, and then um, there's a hole drilled in it for the half inch PVC pipe, and I just cut the screen out in the half inch circle, and I put this backer piece right here, and that's just screwed right to the other piece. And uh, I just set up this. This is actually a drain fitting. I cut the grate out and put some sandpaper on it. Um, and sandpaper on this wheel right here. This, this motor is from a, um, a little electric car. The car had broken, so using that motor. So what I have here is to form sort of the spoke, or the hub, I should say. I have a, a cross fitting right here. It plugs into the half inch PVC on the back side and I could have just used a T but I didn't have one so I'm just using this fitting here and then a couple of half inches here and then um, that was a whole operation getting that centered uh, a lot of geometry and compass work <laughs> so anyway that's pretty centered it's a little off but it's not that critical rubber band easily replaceable this is my little tensioning device it slides up and down just cut that groove on my router table and it just slides up and down to tension the, the rubber band so I can use different size bands and when this uses loses tension and all that I can uh, retension. So that's kind of just fun. This is just a kind of a fun thing. This is to demonstrate how the automatic fish feeder timing 
will operate. The way I have it set up here is here's the box with a timer. This timer circuit will run, I have it programmed right now for four seconds. So it'll supply power to the motor for four seconds. So that's the timer circuit that I bought on eBay for about eight dollars. This entire board here. And this board down here is just something I, I threw together. Um, some voltage regulators to give me my 12 volts and my 5 volts. 5 volts for the motor, 12 volts to run the board. That way I can use um, a power, just an old power supply. This power supply is rated at 12 volts, but it actually puts out about uh, between 18 and 20 volts. So that's why I use the the 12 volt regulator to give me a steady 12 volts. So no matter what that power supply is putting out, as long as it's putting out more, 12, more than 12 volts, I'll get 12 volts for that board. So that works out nice. This timer here is powered, uh, this blue cord right here is 120 volts. Uh, if I had to do it again, I would get one with, you know, maybe 24 volts or actually 12 volts would be better. If I could get one that was powered by 12 volts, then I could use the power supply system that I have set up over here, but I didn't do that. This is what I found, so I have 120 volts, so I need one extra plug. That's okay. These black wires right here are attached to the switch. When the timer goes off, it will connect those two wires together, basically. When those two wires are connected together, it starts this timer and allows power to the motor. I have a sample motor right here to show you how it works. That timer is going to go off. I believe I have it set for 842. So we'll get to see that here in 20 seconds. The timer has to go on for at least one minute. It doesn't let you do intervals, intervals of less than one minute. So uh, that's what the timing circuit is for. So I only run my motor for four seconds. And there it is. You hear the motor running? It ran for four seconds. Now, as you can see, that timer is still on because that timer is going to stay on for one minute. That's the smallest interval I can program it for. So the timer is still on. So those, in other words, these black wires are still connected. But the timing circuit stopped at four seconds. And when that timer goes off, again, which will happen now in 20 seconds right now. That red light will go out and this timing circuit will just be reset. And when the timer goes off again for whatever time interval I've programmed, let's say I program again for 845, at 845 it'll go off again. Or I should say go on. <laughs> it'll go on again. There it just shut off now this is reset because now there's no more power connecting to the activation circuit. And that's it. That's how it works. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention is I did install a momentary switch that'll be when this box is closed, just be sitting on top of the box. But this momentary switch is just so, um, just gives you an, a, a way of activating the, the motor. Uh, for the four second or whatever time you program in here right now. It's four seconds. Um, I'll just demonstrate that real quick So that just activates the timer manually All right, here's the final assembly I added a window there so we could see the timer and could see that it's actually powered uh, I moved the manual test button down a little bit to make room for the window and that's just a that's just some uh, acrylic. There's the timer mounted to the top of the box. There are my wires. I do need to put some type of insulation right there because that is the 110 going in there. And if my little boy stuck his finger on there, he could he could uh, well he'll set the GFCI off because <laughs> it will be plugged into a GFCI outlet. But uh, either way, that's not safe. So I will cover that up um, with something. And since this came out as really neat. Um, I'll use something to cover that up that uh, that looks aesthetically pleasing. So one last uh, manual test to see what it looks like. 
there it is. The blue LED comes on to just show that the timer is activated, and then it goes back off. I think it looks kind of cool. <laughs> That's pretty cool. I found that once I switched to the larger pellets, they started to clog. So that gave me the opportunity to switch out that piece that I had before and go ahead and put a T-fitting in. This is a T-fitting. It's a one inch to one inch to half inch. So now I'm using a half inch pipe under here. Half inch pipe so the pellets don't clog in the, in the, uh, the smaller fitting that I had in there before. But it works a lot better and it looks a little nicer. I want to show you the final installation. Final until I change something else, <laughs> anyway. Uh, I put a larger wheel here, which gives me um, faster feed times. So the larger wheel here makes this wheel turn a little bit faster, but because it's still quite a bit smaller than this, I still get a lot of torque. I have a spring back here, which loads this motor and uh, drive wheel against the larger wheel and hold spring tension. This is a new motor. It's a high torque, low speed motor. I'm just using a conduit clip to attach the motor. Use a little block of cedar under there to make the spacing correct. This is cedar. This little piece of wood here, one on each side, is hickory from Hickory Flooring. It has a groove down the middle. There's a piece of ABS plastic right here that rides in that groove. really well. No more rubber bands, direct drive system. I put just a little wiring block under here to wire up the motor. And then I mounted the timing mechanism right to the front of the hickory here, which dresses it up nicely. A little bit of paint, make things look nice and pretty. And uh, that's it. Apologize for the wind. Windy day here in uh, southwest Florida.